With all of the different types of things that can happen to your computer, it is important that you have regular file backups. So today, we're talking Time Machine. Hey everyone, welcome back to another tech tip. For those that are unaware, Time Machine is a built-in backup software that comes pre-installed on a macOS device. It'll go in, it'll create hourly backups and make things really easy to revert back in case something happens. So today, we're gonna go through, show you some of the settings and show you some of the setups to get your Time Machine up and running. Now, before we dive right in, you will want to make sure that you have a empty external hard drive with nothing on it because Time Machine is going to format that drive in order to prepare it for the backup system. So, for today's demonstration, I have a Samsung portable SSD T5. This is a 500 gigabyte drive. Now, although Time Machine is smart enough that when the drive becomes full, it's automatically gonna start deleting the oldest backups, but of course, the larger drive you have, the further back your backups can go. Now, to get started, go ahead and plug in your hard drive to your machine. Now, when you plug this in, if this is the first time that you're plugging it into the computer, you may get this prompt where it says, do you want to use, it's gonna have your hard drive name to back up with Time Machine. From here, you're gonna go ahead and click on use as a backup disk. That's automatically gonna open up Time Machine, and then it's gonna ask you if you want to erase. If you didn't get that prompt, what you're gonna want to do, so we go up to Spotlight and search Time Machine, you're gonna to want to select Time Machine under the System Preferences option, and that's gonna open up the Time Machine program. From here, you then may get a prompt that says, asking you if you do want to use the disk. If you do, great, go ahead and click on Use as a Backup Disk. If you're still not getting it, what you're gonna to want to do is select where it says Select Backup Disk. And then you're gonna to want to select the hard drive name or the drive name from the list, and then once again, click on Use Disk. No matter which route it used in order to select the disk, you're gonna get this prompt where it says, are you sure you want to erase the backup disk? Erasing will destroy all information on the disk and can't be undone. So this is like I said earlier, where you're gonna to want to have an empty external drive with nothing on it because Time Machine has to prepare that drive and in doing so, it's going to erase it. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on erase. And as you can see, it's now erasing the disk. And of course, depending on the size of the disk is going to determine how long it's going to take to format. Now, once Time Machine has completely formatted the drive, it's gonna give us some information right here in the center. We've got the name of the drive, how much space is available, when the oldest backup took place, when the latest backup took place, and then of course, since it did automatically check backup automatically, it's showing us that our next backup is gonna take place today at 12.17 p.m. If you don't want to have automatic backups, you can come over here on the left-hand side and just uncheck that little checkbox right there. Moving on, if we look a little bit below here, Time Machine keeps local snapshots as space permits, hourly backups for the past 24 hours, daily backups for the past month, weekly backups for all previous months, and of course, the oldest backups are deleted when the disk becomes full. So the bigger the disk, the more backups you're gonna have, but Time Machine is smart enough to delete the oldest backup when the disk becomes full. If we go on into options here, you do have the ability to exclude certain items from these backups because by, by default, Time Machine backs up the entire computer, personal files, system preference files, system files, everything is currently backed up. But you can go in and you can select the little plus right here and then you can navigate to maybe you have a specific program or maybe a folder of like video projects that you don't want to have back up just to save some space. You can go in, navigate to that folder and then click on exclude. If you don't want to do that, if you go down a little bit below here, you can see backup while on battery power. You can check that on or off depending on if you want backups to run while it's on battery power. And then of course you can exclude system files and applications. So if you just want to back up personal files, but exclude system files, you can check that box as well. For today's demo, we're gonna go ahead and just leave everything as default and click on save. And if you come down here where this little checkbox is where it says show time machine in menu bar, you can check on that and you'll notice up in the menu bar here that you now have a time machine logo. From here, you can click on backup now, enter time machine or open up time machine preferences. So if you find yourself entering Time Machine frequently to do restorations or to do backups, things like that, you may wanna check this box just to make it a little bit easier to access. So if we go ahead and click on Backup Now, you can see that it's gonna start preparing backup and it's gonna give us a progress bar. Now, keep in mind the first or the initial backup for this is going to take the longest because it's more or less building a foundation for the backup. 
and then once it's completed, it's then going to just search for changes and back up those changes. That will allow you to save some storage space and some time. Now moving on to the restore process, if you ever need to restore from a time machine backup, there are a few ways that you can do it. However, you will want to determine the level of restoration because this is going to impact which method you're going to use to restore from that time machine backup. If you're looking to just restore a couple files that you may have accidentally deleted within the last 24 hours, you can go on in to Time Machine, thumb through the backups, select the files that you deleted, and then select Restore. If you're looking to restore more than just a few personal files but want to keep the system files intact, plug in the drive that you used to create the backup, head on up to Spotlight, open up Migrate Assistant, and follow the on-screen prompts and select from a Time Machine backup. Now, of course, if you're looking to do a full restore, what you're going to want to do is power down the machine and then plug in the drive that you used to create this Time Machine backups. While you're powering on the Mac, go ahead and hold Command plus the letter R until you see the logo or the spinning globe and then you can release. This is going to launch you into the utility. From then, you can go ahead and choose a specific Time Machine backup to restore from. And that is going to do it for today's tech tip. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. If you did, be sure to give the video a share and a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. And we will see you on the next one. Peace. Later.